So here we are, the final video on the build of the 009 Chorus layout. And it's quite a contrast to the rest of the build. It's kind of, sort of, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a slate quarry. Ish. Hi guys. So at this point the layout looks complete. Well, apart from the edge in, but we'll get to that later. Edging aside, this view is looking pretty good. However, the layout was designed to be viewed from every angle, and that includes a dramatic 180 degree spin. So let's do that now. Christ alive, look at all that bare foam. The foam doesn't actually need cutting today, and the gap on the edge was filled in when I worked around the far end. So the first thing I actually need to do here was paint the foam black. And no, I don't need to add filler on this part. The reason for this is because the slate benefits from an uneven base. The black being used is just a simple acrylic, which dries pretty fast. Uh, the road also needs to be finished off. The reason this part wasn't done on the road video a few weeks back is because the ground needs to be built up to get the road level. I actually did it last week and I didn't tell you about it, because I'm shady. Moving on to the slate tip. This is my selection of slate grades. The first is a grey tile grout, then fine sieved slate dust, then larger slate bits, and then a slate slash dirt mix. The hillside is first covered with delicious icing, and that's the metaphor I'm going with for this. The coat needs to be as thick as the glue will allow. This glue seems particularly viscous. then the larger slate bits are piled up against it. It's really tough to realistically replicate the real slate tip, due to how the pieces settle. Little bits just won't do it, and you'll see as we work through the video I slowly get more annoyed with it. In fact it's happening already. I started nice and delicate, applying a slate in a meaningful manner, and now I'm just wanting it all to end, just lobbing handfuls at the layout. I'm not actually sure as even looking at it at this point, probably looking at the cat. The excess slate is swept off the line with a soft brush. This doesn't need to be spotless, you just want the larger pieces far enough away that the trains won't catch on them on the way past. You can see how I'm making a little pile between the line and the road here. The whole area is now sprayed with isopropyl alcohol. With this you don't really want it running off the slate, just enough to soak into the dust. Then Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement is sprayed on. And I have good news. I've worked out that you can get a fine mist using this spray bottle, you just need to apply more pressure. A more gentle squeeze will result in larger droplets of glue. At this point I've remembered that I'd forgotten about the foreground. This was going to be slate tip as well, so the whole process is repeated, which is great if you were staring out the window when I did the larger bit just then. One benefit of this area is that the ground is nearly level, so the slate piles up a lot nicer. I also started to add finer slate dust mix to the edges of the slate areas to blend it in with the scene a bit more. In reality, it makes sense that you'd find finer pieces in this area, doesn't it? I don't know, I haven't actually checked, that just sounded legit. One thing I will say about the Woodland Scenic Cement is when it's dry, it's a brilliant hold. And since it's soaking into the slate dust between the larger bits, it's basically set in like concrete. Ah, here we go. At this point, I was getting sad about the finish on the hillside, as it's too fine, and I was trying to get the look of larger chunks of slate like at the entrance to Abertlefeni so larger bits were applied on top. This all needed a day or two to harden, so I went away to watch my current favourite K-drama on Netflix, Startup. Ok, so the slate is set in, and the next issue is how the slate doesn't look like miniature slate at all, it looks like small pieces of slate stuck onto the side of a foam block, so I'm going to try and fix that, with paint. The first step for this process was to highlight the individual slates by dry brushing light antique white from above. As I decided the best method to add scale to the slate was to add artificial highlights and shadows, because that's the only thing I know how to do. 
Next, you can look at my massive hand whilst I apply ammo enamel black wash to the slate. The idea is that this will settle between the individual slates, but I'm just dabbing it over the entire area as I'm not going to sit for three months dripping it into the gaps, and then I use some kitchen roll to wipe it off the raised edges. It kind of worked. The black wash does seep into the surrounding area, such as the road. So to hide this, the fine slate dust was brushed over these patches. This actually worked really well. Finally heading towards slate satisfaction, I turned my attention to the railway. I used the slate dust to ballast in this area as it would make more sense that the railway to use slate and not pay for ballast. This also helped to blend the line into the surrounding quarry, as it's all the same colour, and that's nice. I'm aiming to cover most of the area here, as this would help set the slate dust around the road as well as the railway. Ballast bond was used here to set the railway, but I probably could have used the scenic cement and got the same result, but I look more professional if I use different products. The slate's all curing, so I took this time to focus on tidying up the edging. Before painting, any holes or joints needed to be filled in. I actually did do a few of these when I was going around the different areas of the layout, so it's only really this side of the layout that I need to focus on. Humbrol Modeler's filler thins down with white spirit and it makes it much easier to apply on areas like this. I wanted to blend the edges of the slate tip with the rest of the scenery. So I'm going to make more polyfiber shrubbery where the two meet. And in the same style as the rest of the layout, knock leaves were applied on top. These bushes were also made down on the foreground as well. You can see how little amount of knock leaf material I'm applying. No, this isn't because I know what I'm doing, it's because I've ran out, and this is all I could scrape together from the bottom of the modelling drawer. I wanted to add a bit of detail to this scene, but because of its size it would be really easy to make it look cramped, which is why I haven't planned to put any buildings or anything in it. So instead I'm going to add some old rusted bits on the floor, and then coated with a watery mix of rust weathering pig. These could then be glued onto the floor with a drop of super glue. Like I say, they're small, but do add something to the scene. And because ModelU have been kind enough to support me through this project, the final figures are here to build. These are the workmen at rest. I don't need to keep going on about ModelU's supreme quality, but I will. If you haven't seen these in person, you really need to. I have yet to find figures that match the detail in these prints. They are fragile, so you do need to be careful when you're removing them from the supporting frame. It's very easy to snap off, say, a hand holding a mug of tea, for example. The lads are all glued onto cotton buds ready to paint. Because I have five of them to paint, I won't go into each one now. I've split them into two groups, bluey purple overalls and brown and cream shirt and trousers. The skin areas are painted on first. These are all Citadel colours. The main coat is Kislev Flesh. And then this gets a light dry brushing of Flayed One Flesh on top to highlight the raised areas. Finally, the figures are flipped upside down and a wash of Reglum flesh shade is applied, which sets in the shadows. I know, it all sounds very fleshy. The first chap has his trousers added first. This is Army Painter's Leather Brown. In fact, all the following paints are Army Painter's, so I don't need to keep saying Army Painter's. He also has a Leather Brown hat to match. His jumper, or cardi, I, I can't quite see what he's wearing today, is painted in ash grey, just to get a nice boring look to the outfit. Sorry if you wear ash grey outfits. And his jacket is painted in dungeon grey, which is slightly darker than ash grey. At the moment he may look like a child's painted him in block colours, but wait. 
he's getting an upside down blackwash. Hmm, look at him now, very distinguished. He looks like a day's work has knocked the joy out of life. Moving on to his mate and he's sporting the ultramarine blue overalls look. So not really much I can say here apart from that. Oh, there's something, an ash grey hat for contrast. Hang about, this guy's got a bag with him. So this was painted in leather brown, which is an excellent colour for leather. All five men basically use the same colour palette in various setups, to try and give some consistency to the scene. The black enamel wash takes a little while to dry, but then the figures can be glued into place. To give a quiet look to the quarry, I decided to only use three humans on this side, organised in a group, having a chat, probably about how drinking tea is killing their workmates. Look up the history of Bryn Eglois Quarry if you don't get that reference. I mentioned that the station was included on the layout for the workmen to hitch a lift to the quarry, so the remaining two are added onto the platform. These two are actually leaning, so I've glued them onto the side of the station building. It's funny how two little figures can bring such life to the scene, and that's lucky because I can't afford to densely populate the layout. Well, that's the layout finished. So the only thing to do now is tidy up the engine. Once the fill is sanded back, I spray the whole thing with black aerosol. I didn't really want to hand paint as I don't want visible brush stroke. Of course, this idea made me wonder how I'd mask off the scenics. I obviously couldn't use masking tape, so I settled on a bit of paper, and worked at one bit at a time. It worked! Watching this back, it looks really tedious, but actually I filmed one of the more tricky parts, and the whole painting process only took about 10 minutes. Right then, that's that. Chorus complete and in the bag. It's been a really fun build, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I know you have, because you tell me. Shame this journey has to come to an end. Okay, fine, I'll do another series. God, stop pestering me. And no, I'm not telling you what it is today, but it's narrow again. And it's going to be a prototype build with a fiddle yard and points and everything. I just want to thank the sponsors of this series first, Model U and Small Loco Works. To put faith in such a small budding channel like mine has been so good of them, and I'm really grateful. Hopefully they think I've done their products justice. And thank you, you there viewing, taking so much time to watch my videos so far, leaving likes or comments or interacting in some way. It means a lot to know people actually enjoy what I'm doing. In fact, if you want to see this layout in person, I'll be taking it to the Chorus Model Railway Exhibition, and that's on the 26th to 27th of August in Mahunkleth. Come and have a chat, at least one of us will enjoy that. Details in the description if you're tempted by that. See you on the next series. Cheers.